What's the hardest part of investing? In your opinion, what's the hardest part about investing? You're a great executive producer. Because I <laughs> you gotta let the beat build. We gotta let the beat. We gotta let we gotta let some more people get in here. Share, hit the like button. Yes. And share. There were five people. Share with your baby daddy, baby mama, your auntie, uncles. We're gonna have a time tonight. Um, the hardest part is staying invested for a period of seven years. Um, a famed hedge fund investor, Jim Chanos, is now shutting down his fund. He he was a perma bear. And what worked in 2008 does not work in these market conditions. Please put in chat, the market is permanently rigged to stay up. The market is permanently rigged to stay up. So even though there's all this disaster amongst the economy, the Nikkei, the Japanese market is up. Uh, NASDAQ is moving higher. Microsoft is moving higher. NVIDIA is moving higher. Um, IWM calls for the Russell 2000 are going up as a result. The Dow is doing pretty good and almost XLK that we've talked about before is moving higher. So it looks like third year into a presidential year, even though the leadership isn't great, it looks like the market will be up 20% for the year mm -hmm. by the time we get to December. Um, there's a lot of criticism and the polls were not favorable for Biden. But the one thing that he will have going for him going into the election is that the stock market has done well um, relatively this year despite all of the economic turmoil that is there. So the biggest decision and the hardest thing about investing is just staying long, pause, in a position, pause, long enough, pause, to see profitability. I, I'm begging I, you guys, seven years, please put in chat, I'm going to hold for seven years, no matter what, buy quality. We've told you which ones to buy. For those of you who haven't listened, I'm sorry. It may be time to jump off a balcony. <laughs> but for those of you who have, I commend you. I appreciate you and I love you dearly. But stay long. Being a perma bear is a uh, mm -hmm. fool, as fool as Aaron, for sure. And an idiot's mistake to not be long in the stock market. By no means are we telling you to jump off uh, of anything. Uh, yes, but theoretically. I, I think, <laughs> theoretically, I, I think you're right. Um, if the one word I could say, which that is the toughest thing to do, is to be patient. Um, you, you got to be built for this, right? So when, hand, when, yep. when we, we saw the excitement of people having gains in 2020, we saw that continuing to 2021. Uh, and then those same people we didn't hear from in 2022. And that's part of this, this roller coaster route. That's the market. But in the end, like you said, it is pinned to, to always uh, appreciate over time. It's just that yeah. when it goes down, like we saw it go down in 2022, it hurts. Um, and so you got to be patient. These are the times where your patience are, is going to get tested and what kind of resolve will you have and what kind of discipline will you have and what kind of lessons will you learn from these times? And so if you took those lessons from 2022, then you were able yeah. to readjust, reapply and reassure yourself in the work, right? So 2023 comes. And now again, when we had these calls in early January, now you're starting to see the, some of the, the, the fruits of labor of those lessons that you learned during the three Absolutely. years. I think this past four years, we've we've seen a microcosm of the history of the market. We've seen yeah. a recession, <laughs> we've seen a bull market, we've seen a bear market, uh, we've seen interest rates rise, we've seen inflation rise, we've seen- Presidential uh, cycles. We've seen it in the in this yep. just three years, we've seen everything you've kind of needed to see to really test a market over the, the uh, from a historical standpoint. And so now that you've seen it and you've been through some of it, what kind of resolve will you have now? How patient will you be now? Uh, because history is likely to repeat itself. Mm -hmm. uh, and we know what's ahead of us, right? We know technology is here. We know that there's a threat of a possible recession, but we've seen these signs before. So I think being patient is probably the number one thing, the number one thing that inside of the market that is challenging for me personally, but I think for a lot of people as well. And you have to remember too, um, even in times when a recession is coming, that's when the next crop of best companies are being built. NVIDIA was created before the recession, but their emergence as a dominant tech player comes now. Like company, we need to go back to building real companies and there are the infrastructure of the internet. Like they have the most powerful chip for development. Like they, we were talking about it before we went live. They're the engine of all these companies right now. Mm -hmm. So there's always that analogy of you can either try and dig for gold or sell the picks and shovels they are the digital pick and shovel and for the foreseeable future i don't see that see them having a great competitor yeah like 
TSM may be the only true competitor, but because of the geopolitical threat, no one wants to deploy capital there yet. Mm -hmm. And we need more American companies that are dominant. We are seeing the emergence of a new tech player. And of course, if the earnings do well tomorrow, which they should, the stock could pop to, you were talking 550. But if you have to deploy money into a growth stock, who's better than NVIDIA right now? Like I keep saying, for this year, it opened up at 148.51. It's so 504 right now. That's 339% from long-term investing only. Y'all don't even include the option. Stay plugged in, stay out. I can't believe next year's going to be four years. My God, where's the time going? <laughs> where's the right. time going? So, okay. So um, let's get this bad boy up to 5,000. Yes, before please. Before we start talking about what everybody wants to hear. Um, let's get this bad boy up to 5,000. Hit the like button and share. In the meantime, yes. um, what are some of the biggest mistakes that traders have made in 2023? Uh, I was talking about this a little bit earlier, but I think one of the biggest mistakes um, is not being invested long term to understand where the market is truly going when you're trading short term. So in order to be a great short term investor or day trader, you have to be a good long term investor first. So if I wake up and my portfolio is up. So when I woke up today, saw NVIDIA and Microsoft had pushed up overnight. Microsoft made a new all time high before the market opened and video was floating after that that immediately told me the direction of the market to go um secondly not sticking to one target whether you're in options futures crypto forex please put in chat i'm going to marry one target and third deviating from plan i know y'all tired of me saying it but i got to keep saying it because i'm not enough of you guys are winning at a high enough rate stop changing your plan if the plan for market mondays is to go live or put out content every monday we can't put the content out on Wednesday when we feel like it. So in your trading plan, less is more. Someone asked me earlier today, like, do I try and be at a certain amount of trades by the time the holiday season comes? You can't trade like that. You have to trade when the move is there. So if I don't have a good move on Wednesday or a good move on Friday, I have to wait another week before the move is there. I see too many people throwing money in, especially like on the the one day expiring options and even on futures going to a shorter time frame like a one minute and you're forcing a move that isn't there it's better for you to wait for a move that is going to win than to just try and throw money in and then be like damn i got stopped out and now it erodes your confidence less is going to be more but one target be a long-term investor to turn into a great short-term trader and stop deviating from your plan i'm gonna add number four to that and i think uh, it's people trying to figure out the perfect time to get in the market that's a great one right like we we, we talking about nvidia it's up 243 percent, and people will ask you is is now the time is well the the time it's always been the time right <laughs> if we look at the fundamentals of the companies if, if we look at the balance sheet if we look at the cash flow if we look at what they have in reserves is now the time right we'll talk about apple every week for four years and they'll ask you the same thing is it time yep. well it's been the time and now in 2023 it's up 53 right they'll ask you about amazon it, what was it the time well it's up 70 percent this time. year microsoft is up 54 percent this year so yep. it's always been the time the procrastination is what is stopping people from i think maybe procrastination and lack of belief in themselves i don't think people believe that they've educated themselves enough and feel comfortable enough to do it even though you're telling them and you're telling them like hey here's the research here's the reason here's the research there's something about pulling that trigger and doing it. Yeah. For yourself. I think that's why you, when we started, was always the suggestion of take trades, do some paper trades, take 300 trades. I know that was the yeah. number you say, because that gets you in the rhythm of, all right, I'm feeling comfortable. I know it's not real yet, but I feel comfortable enough to actually be in this ball game until you really do it. Yeah. And then again, you'll start learning those lessons about being patient. Like those things will come with it. But I think people trying to figure out, is it time? Is it time? It's like double Dutch, right? Like you just wait for the perfect time to jump in. And there's then no perfect time. There's no perfect time. You yeah. just have to put your you, you have to put you know some skin in the game, really. And one thing I think we all can agree upon, Rashada talked about this a lot, especially at like the live shows this year, is like the regret of not starting earlier. Like we all look back and be like, we should have launched this five years ago. Now thank God partnership has worked out. I'm thankful for y'all, thankful for everybody in Red Panda. It worked out when it was supposed to, but it was like looking now, I'm like, 
the world needed this five years prior. You have to get out of your own way and, and stop having fear, um, especially if you're investing long-term VOO, VTI, VT, VGT, Apple, Microsoft, Google, NVIDIA, Tesla, free scholarship time, you know, um, time has to be on your side. And if you keep missing out on these moments, you're going to look back in eight years and be like, damn, I could have had four or $500,000 for free by just deploying money into the best companies on earth. Investing is not that hard. Investing is not that hard, but can you execute day in and day out? That's what it's really about. And he told Franklin Dynatech in episode 70, like we've been saying the same thing, but that's why I made that post last week. The more that you look to learn, the further off and longer it's going to take for you to actually get rich. One of my, and I said it on live earlier, Rashad don't say it to flex, but he's like, y'all don't even listen to podcasts. It shows me how much he's executing. You don't need to listen to 47 podcasts to know to upload every week. Like, I need y'all to go from a place of fear to executing because all of you deserve more. And I know that I do the mantra all the time. I deserve to be rich. I deserve to be happy. I deserve to be wealthy. I deserve to be free. But you have to believe it. Put your money into these companies or otherwise you're going to be left out. 